Is it their eyes? Their fur? Or simply, their moves? No matter what it is, face it, they're irresistible. It's time to catch up with some of the freshest faces that we share our world with. From sunrise to sunset, be immersed in their lives. Mingle with these youngsters and get to know them and their families better. Experience all the hustle and bustle of their daily routines, all while getting up close to these baby animals in our world. Our day is taking place in farmyards and paddocks around the globe. Coming up, meet a miniature horse with a big personality. She's totally hot to trot. Plus, chilly weather means today's a snow day. It's not every day a pooch from down under gets to play in a winter wonderland. And who needs a trampoline? when you've got energy to burn, like these hyped-up barnyard babies. The first animals most of us learn about as children are often found on the farms of the world. Humans have been farming for over 10,000 years, and in that time, a multitude of species have been domesticated. While wolves may have been the first animals to form strong bonds with us, it was the sheep, cattle, pigs, and goats that kicked off the robust beginnings of Team Farm. More animals were added to the mix as farming practices continued to develop and advance around the globe. The brute strength of cattle, such as ox and water buffalo, were useful for tugging carts. But the addition of horses and ponies gave us the opportunity to move faster than we ever had before. When chickens hit the scene, farmers across the globe were stumped with the classic question. No matter which of them came first, both chickens and eggs now exist in vast quantities. Their cheeps and clucks filling barnyards everywhere. The only things more popular than farm animals are their adorable offspring. So let's open the gates and explore the lives of more farm babies. It's early morning. As the light rolls across the grassy paddocks and farmyards around the world, it is one animal's job to tell everyone what time it is. Sleeping in is not an option on this farm. Kids are usually the first to spring into action, but they're a little slow today. Getting up can be hard enough, but if you want a playmate, you need to get others up, too. This billy goat is keeping an eye on the youngsters. But some days, the dads just want five more minutes of peace. There's a rule around here. The first out of the gate is the first of the feeding trough. Naturally, this leads to some congestion during peak hour. 
A good trick is to bypass the traffic and look for a shortcut. There is one snag. Just make sure you can fit. There's always one show-off that makes it look too easy. The public swimming pool is popular this morning. These ducklings are getting in some early laps to really work up their appetite. Drinking troughs are so versatile. It looks like the chickens arrived a tad too late for this pool party. Grass is on the duck's breakfast menu. The trick is how to eat it. It's just so slippery for those little beaks. It seems the best method is the old grab and shake. And if that doesn't work, grab and shake again. These rabbits are in no rush to leave the barn. They know if they wait long enough, breakfast will come to them. Unlike some animals, rabbits dine in. But these family meals are quite noisy affairs. Most rabbits are content to stick with the buffet. But there are special treats available for those that are willing to put in a little bit of extra effort. OK, a lot of effort. How many rabbits can share one leaf? Two's company, but three's definitely a crowd. Speaking of crowds, looks like it helps to book ahead to make sure you get a place at the breakfast table. If there was a competition for the biggest appetite on the farm, calves would be the top contenders. Some can drink up to 10 litres a day. Milk for a calf is like getting petrol for a car. Latch on and fill up. Chickens are very curious by nature. This little chick is more interested in testing out this swing than eating its breakfast. Or perhaps it wants the best of both worlds. This would be a lot easier with arms. All the playground activity seems to have drawn a crowd. The pressure is on. Whoops. Success. Well, almost. Once breakfast is over, it's time for the baby animals to explore the farm. Only, this place is a lot bigger than it looks. And it's no fun to be lost and alone. It's much safer to use the buddy system. Friends are great at encouraging each other to leap out of their comfort zones. If the buddy knows where they're going, great. However, if both have no sense of direction, well, at least they've got company. Sometimes it's easier to find a larger group and follow the leader. prefer their independence, so sticking to a group isn't really their style. They'd rather push the boundaries and see things from a different perspective, a much higher perspective. There's a great view from up here. Some of the taller farm inhabitants are a little scary on the first encounter. Exploration is certainly encouraged here. 
but those that stray too far might get brought back by the scruff of the neck. A kitten's walk of shame. Just like kittens, kids love to test their balancing skills. And on a farm, there are challenges everywhere. To a human, these are old rusty barrels. But to a baby goat, this is an adventure playground. Being some of the best climbers in the animal world, it's a fun way for the kids to get a bit of practice in. Those little hooves look like drumsticks, tapping out a beat as it jumps around. It's not hard to tell when a goat is proud of itself. Just keep an eye out for the celebratory jumps. It's time to check out the family album of one of the hardest and fastest workers racing around a farm, the Border Collie. Pups are born into litters of four to eight. Their coats coming in a variety of colors, patches included. Just like human babies, Border Collie pups are like furry sponges absorbing an enormous amount of their world from a very young age. This particular breed is so smart, many believe they are the most intelligent dogs in the world. Originally from the border counties of Scotland, these dogs are completely in their element with farm life. Border Collies have been used to work livestock on properties for about 350 years, and they love having a job to do. Need to round up the sheep? No problem. Border Collies are expert herders. In fact, they're not only good at it, they love to do it. So remember, if you have a job that needs to get done, call a Border Collie. Good catch. Next, the family album is showcasing some creatures originally from South America. A member of the camelid family, these fluff balls will one day develop into alpacas. However, as babies, they are called cria. Females give birth to a single baby after an 11-month gestation. Development is fast for cria. Unlike human babies who take many months to learn how to stand, a cria will attempt to get on all fours just 30 minutes after their birth. Being naturally accustomed to the extremes of temperature in the Andes, alpacas have developed a thick coat for which they have been farmed for thousands of years. Today, their wool remains highly sought after for its superior strength and softness. These playful youngsters are kindly showing off some of their color range. Alpaca fleece coming in over 22 shades. Unfortunately, a shorn alpaca can result in the odd, questionable haircut. Good thing most paddocks don't have mirrors. A little alpaca tip? A cranky alpaca can and will spit if it feels threatened. So it's best to stay on their good side. These little ones seem quite happy, though. Their curious natures have them exploring every corner of the farmyard. One of the daily challenges of life on a farm is self-maintenance. Staying clean is a hard thing to do while digging for morsels in the mud pen. The piglets appear to be doing a good job of it this morning. They're surprisingly clean, at least from above. Let's hope they wipe their feet before going inside. There may not seem to be much benefit to preening when making a nest in the dirt, but that's why they're called dust baths. With this much hair, grooming is a must although it could take all day. Self-grooming can be time-consuming for many farm animals. 
but the lucky ones can attain a personal stylist. Looking good, kid. The day is getting into full swing, and one group of animals that are full of activity at morning tea time are the piglets. Some farm mothers have only one offspring to feed, but sows can have up to 13. Each little piglet weighs about one kilogram at birth, and at this time of the day, they have one thing on their mind. For prime feeding positions, competition can be fierce. As the piglets jostle for their place, some clever babies will use their siblings as a footstool if necessary. Each one has to find their teat and do what pigs do best, stuff themselves. Here's a rare opportunity to get a jump start on the other piglets in the litter. However, word appears to be spreading rather quickly. Piglets will suckle for up to 17 weeks. During this time, they form strong bonds with their mother and will often communicate with her as they feed. A piglet can identify its mother's grunts from every other sow on the farm. Very useful if you lose track of your feeding station. Pigs are also known to be one of the smartest animals in the world. They have excellent long-term memory, are experts at finding hidden objects, and are even very good at mazes. Who knows, when this little piggy grows up, it might figure out how to start the tractor. There are many different types of farms operating around the globe, some having more unusual occupants. One creature that fills a less traditional farm animal role is the delicate silkworm. Let's step back in time to discover their history and life story. The art of raising silkworms dates back to ancient China, their cultivation being practiced in secret for over 2,000 years no doubt to protect the valuable silk trade. These fine natural threads are produced via sericulture, or in more common terms, silk farming. The babies are the stars of these farms because they produce the goods. It begins when a mature female moth lays her eggs, anything from three to 500. After 10 days, the tiny larvae emerge. After hatching comes the feast of a lifetime. Four weeks of eating the wholesome greens of mulberry leaves. It's a diet few would envy, but within weeks the caterpillars explode in proportion and with each successful molt, they grow up to 10 times their original size. After their final molt, they begin the process of making a silk cocoon. To create these mini masterpieces, they move their heads back and forth in a figure eight motion up to 300,000 times. After 48 hours, the job is complete. While inside, the worm begins pupating. Two weeks later, a silk moth will emerge, getting to grips with its transformation. Time is short for the adults, as they only survive for three days. So the pressure is on to find a mate and start the cycle again. In the meantime, machines unravel the silken cocoons, filaments often measuring a kilometer. These natural threads are used to produce all kinds of items, such as clothing, bedding, and rugs. Silk production, such an amazing feat carried out by such young, talented creatures. Another lesser-known animal raised domestically are elk. Native to North America, this species, like the silkworm, has been farmed for thousands of years. Instead of silk, however, it's the soft velvet on their antlers that is in demand. Cows usually give birth to a pair of calves in the summer. In their first few weeks of life, elk calves can gain a kilo a day. 
By the time winter comes around, they will have gained six times their original weight. One of their more striking features are their long, splendid legs. The youngsters seem to have limbs that have outgrown them. Their spotted coats are another defining attribute of the juveniles. They retain their creamy spots until six months of age. Like all mammals, elk young require milk from their mothers. Although this one appears to be reaching the end of those days. When fully grown, female elks can reach up to 270 kilograms. Males, or bucks, packing on at least 30 more kilos. This little one has a long way to go. It's almost lunch. Time to head back to the pig pen. Looks like the babies have been having a squeal of a time. As piglets develop, they begin to take advantage of all their piggy tools. One of their most well-known being their snouts. More than a nose, the snout is perfectly designed to forage and uproot all kinds of treats. It's packed full of sensory receptors, which lead curious piglets to the most promising locations to find something interesting. Their snout is like their own personal shovel and toolkit rolled into one. Understanding their place in the hierarchy is one of the first things piglets discover. While humans like to shake hands when they meet, pigs prefer to bump snouts. Before this happens, it's likely they've already identified each other by their smell and sound. As highly social animals, these piglets will develop up to 20 different sounds to talk with each other. The various grunts, squeals and growls help a pig to communicate many things, such as where they are, how they feel and what they're doing. This one's hiding. And their highly sensitive ears allow a pig to detect the direction of a sound with pinpoint accuracy. Those mini radar dishes are always on the go, as are their energetic little owners. As the sun reaches its peak in the sky, many animals prefer to conserve their energy than battle the midday heat. Some may consider powering through it, but when tired legs decide to take a nap, it's best to follow their lead. This lamb is already counting sheep in dreamland. It's common for piglets to snuggle up to stay warm. It's a behavior that remains with them into adulthood. Those aren't necessary when you have a younger sibling to rest your head on. The urge to nap is resisted by a few in the farmyard. But for most, the warm sun is the perfect excuse to hit the hay and rest after a busy morning. It's early afternoon, and playtime has just kicked off. The kids are putting their heads together to make up some barnyard games. Headbutt is a favorite for goats around the world. It's the perfect game for two. Even the youngest in the herd are keen to give it a go. How many times does a kid need to jump to get a new challenger around here? Nice 360. Whoops. Hmm. The older goats may need to teach these kids how to play. Here's a game that's fun for, well, nearly everyone. Their jumping platform is very patient. When it comes to activities, ducklings prefer games the whole gaggle can play. 
These latecomers are waddling in just in time for a huge game of Duck Duck Goose. What a bunch of party animals. The Kriya are down to play at any time of day. They are one of very few animals about the farm that can be seen engaging in a friendly game of neck wrestling. The piglets are always on the go. There's more than enough playmates in this barnyard. Fun and games are just more enjoyable with friends. In one of the cooler farms of the world, some Australian shepherd pups are preoccupied with a fresh load of snow. These dogs are used to working hard on farms, but this is the perfect excuse to have a break and play some catch in a temporary winter wonderland. Encountering snow for the first time can be an overwhelming experience. Just where did all this white stuff come from? And is it safe for curious puppies? Playtime is starting to slow down, and across the paddocks there's another baby animal that's beginning to find its way in the farmyard. This little lady is no ordinary foal. At only one month of age, she has a lot of growing up to do, but she'll never get very big because she is a miniature horse. To qualify as a miniature horse, the adults have to measure less than 87 centimeters at the withers, the base of their mane. While they may be short in stature, miniature horses have a long history. The first specially bred miniatures date all the way back to 1650, to the zoo of King Louis XIV at the Palace of Versailles. With royal heritage like that, you might expect their stable to be encrusted in gold and silver. But these petite horses are content with the simple life. There's even time set aside to meet the commoners, who fly in to say hello. If only the grass was as pleasant. This shoot is presenting a surprising challenge. But she is no quitter, unless there's milk on offer. The various sights and smells of farm life are starting to become familiar to this new arrival. Some more pleasant than others. But it's not all a walk in the paddock. This foal's still developing her trotting skills. She needs to be able to keep up with the team. But why keep up when you can take the lead? Look at that style. With moves like that, she could become the perfect miniature show horse. Her royal ancestors would be so proud. Architectural design is a big part of the street appeal of any home, whether it be in the town or country. When it comes to pastoral properties, the rustic look is always in. For example, a bird's eye view of this farm reveals a myriad of stone walls. In the northern regions of the United Kingdom, stone walls like this have been in place for three and a half millennia. They've stood the test of time. Today, they continue to keep inquisitive little lambs safe from harm. High in the Andes Mountains of South America, another farm animal, the llama, makes its home among stone walls. These structures are perhaps a little more exciting. The ancient remnants of the Inca citadel, Machu Picchu, Llamas have been domesticated for at least 5,000 years and have been grazing these slopes long before this historical area was built in the 15th century. 
Just like their close relatives, the alpacas, llamas are highly valued for their strong and thick hair. They have also proved themselves highly useful as protectors of the herd. Their large size and defensive nature has made them an intimidating force to any predators that may consider approaching the farmyard. Their toughness and ability to adjust to different landscapes has made them in demand on farms around the world. A world away in Asia, bamboo is the material of choice for this goat herd's sturdy home. It may need to be checked for breaches because one member of the family is on the wrong side of the fence. Breaking out was the easy part. How do you get back in? Elsewhere, this feisty flock are on the move. You need to be quick to keep up in this chicken run. These clucky residents are keen to show off their extensive abode. For this brood, it's all about the free-range life. With this much space, there's plenty of room to stretch out and flap those wings. This is Country Living. It's time to flip open the family album this afternoon and introduce some country pups with royal connections, corgis. Although small in stature, corgis make excellent working dogs. These youngsters are learning the ropes from mum already. Pups are born into litters of six to eight. Although those short legs and long bodies may not appear very useful, one day they will be perfect for keeping the other members of the farm in check. More than just farm dogs, they're also popular as house pets. Their most famous owner, Queen Elizabeth II, owned 30. It's safe to say she's a corgi loyalist. Geese can be notoriously difficult to round up. But with corgis on their tails, they're quick to get in line. As are pigs. While they are a relatively small breed, corgis do have large appetites. Good thing farm life offers them plenty of chances to exercise. Otherwise, they could turn into little porkies. These hardy, loyal, outgoing dogs will happily round everyone up on the farm for 12 years or so. Next in the album are unique members of the bovine clan, Highland Cattle. Within half an hour of entering the world, these babies are up on their feet looking for mum's udder. A mere 30 kilograms at birth, one day these calves could push the scales to beyond half a tonne. Highland cows are known to be great mothers, very protective and very indulgent, feeding their calves until they're about 10 months old. This breed is known for their toughness in harsh conditions. Why else would you use a jagged rock to scratch your face? From a very young age, these rural hippies start to grow a long, shaggy coat that is perfectly suited for their historical home range the chilly highlands of Scotland. Calves aren't born with horns, but eventually they will develop a very impressive set of pointers. A farmyard favorite. This breed's combination of luscious locks and handlebar horns make them an easily distinguished member in the bovine family tree. The afternoon is rolling by, and many of the new arrivals are ready to attempt the challenge of taking their first steps in the farmyard. Step one, learning to stand up. A mother's support is always appreciated. Not bad. Whoops, easy 
does it. Confidence is key. Mum is keeping a keen eye on the first steps for this little one. Almost there. And up. This standing business could take some getting used to. Another is inspired to give it a shot. Back legs first seems to be the safest technique. Getting ahead of oneself is not advised if you don't want to land on your head. Slow and steady does it. A few encouraging licks from Mum, and this calf is ready to test its legs. Falling should be expected from time to time, but that's okay. The important part is trying again. But what's the rush? There's always tomorrow. <laughs> Roosters may be known as the farm alarm clock, but they're not the only breed that enjoys making noise around the barnyard. That's the turkey gobble. It's a unique sound, often performed in groups. With their comical call and rather unique physical features, they certainly stand out from the pack. If farms had beauty pageants, turkeys may not get invitations. The chicks are called poults, their biggest concern at this age is learning what to eat and how to drink. They pick up a lot from older turkeys that have done it all before. As the chicks grow, their skin colours will develop and those distinctive neck folds, known as wattles, will grow larger. Soon, they begin to resemble mature turkeys. Females are usually basic in colour and tend to keep a low profile. Whereas fully developed males appear to think rather highly of themselves and will use any opportunity to puff up and display their impressive plumage and vibrant coloration. They really are crowd pleasers. Let's take an afternoon trek to Asia, where these highly valued farm animals roam. Water buffalo have been a part of rural life in Asia for over 5,000 years. Some 160 million are found here, where they are prized for their milk and immense strength. They are so popular they can be found in up to a third of farm properties in the region. For water buffaloes, this is the life. It may be a little crowded, but it looks relaxing. Just keep an eye out for bubbles. When it comes to farm animals, water buffalo are super heavyweights, potentially reaching 1,200 kilograms, a long way from their birth weight of just 30 to 40 kilos. This little one is going to have to eat a lot of grass before it can catch up to Mum. Next, let's make our way to the United Kingdom to check out another type of bovine, the English Longhorn. Native to the UK, this draft breed became almost extinct until extensive breeding efforts were able to boost their numbers during the late 1970s. This attractive group grazing in the paddock could just as easily be posing for a family portrait. Although they're not a dairy cow, they provide excellent milk and calves can grow very large at a young age. As adults, English longhorns can grow to weigh a metric tonne. The cows are very efficient at protecting their young, but despite their impressive size, this breed is known for having a good temperament on farms. 
Regardless, getting in the way of those horns is not advised. Not quite a longhorn right now, but one day, this little one will live up to the family name. Wild boar may seem like an odd choice to raise on a farm. However, on some properties, they are the preferred choice over more traditional pig breeds. The piglets are commonly referred to as squeakers. No awards for how they got that name. To help these youngsters avoid predators, their coats are striped and spotted. And if they are detected, these little grunters can move deceptively fast. On farms with adequate fencing, this is rarely a problem. The boundaries not only keep them safe, they also ensure the rest of the farm is not dug up by their hungry little snouts. These little boars really know how to have a wild time. When most people think of farms, these birds immediately come to mind. With their population at approximately 25 billion, chickens have become a rural mainstay, with hundreds of breeds found pecking around hen houses of the world. Their life cycle begins as you'd expect, safe in the confines of an egg. Eggs are incubated for 21 days. During this time, the chick develops from an embryo to a ready-to-hatch baby. Sometimes, chicks will chirp to their mothers while still in the egg. To help them break into the big world outside, chicks have an egg tooth on the top of their beaks. This small protrusion helps them crack the eggshell's hard interior. After hatching and feeling the warmth of the sun for the first time, chicks need to rest and recover from the ordeal. Cracking open an egg is a big effort for a little chick. Eventually, they will gather their strength, stand up on their feet and begin to move around. Their feathers start off wet from life inside the egg, but once outside, will soon become soft and fluffy. Hens are great caregivers, and for chicks, there's no better place than under their mother's wing. She keeps them warm and safe. When the time comes, she will show them where and what to eat. A farm has plenty of bugs, grubs and worms available all year round. Chickens are the best at scratching up a meal. After only a few weeks, the chicks will be able to survive on their own. At six months of age, they will become mature, confident members of the brood. The afternoon is beginning to wind down. Back in the miniature horse paddock, our little friend is looking for activity. The older horses are a bit boring for a playful foal. An adventurous playmate would help to get those young hooves moving. Nursing is usually an easy option to while away part of the afternoon. If only Mum would stop moving. You've got to be persistent if you want to get fed around here. It appears there is a two-course meal being served today. Some new feed just arriving. Grass is a natural source of nutrition for horses, but commercially produced feeds like this are often used to supplement their diet. The verdict is positive. It seems every horse wants their fair share of these tasty treats. For this young lady, it's been a busy day. And after a good meal, her head seems to be getting heavier by the second. Time to give in and rest. The sun's shadows are getting longer as the day is coming to a close. 
although a horse's appetite is rarely sated. Nor is a Border Collie's desire to play. Just one more game. And then one after that. This small family is getting ready to call it a day. Under a golden sunset, the sheep are getting the shake along. It only takes a few to get the flock moving. For some, there's still time for a quick bite. While others are already tucked in for the night. Huddling is an essential bedtime routine for the chicks. The centre is usually the warmest, but you may have to step on your siblings to get there. A little repositioning is also required for these ducklings to settle down. Inside this farmhouse, a long night could be in store for this chocolate Labrador with all these tiny hungry mouths to feed. But before too long, she, along with the rest of the barnyard residents, will be fast asleep. Dreaming about all the new adventures tomorrow may bring.